In today's video, we're going to be walking through a care guide and a species profile on the angelfish. The angelfish is one of the most commonly kept South American cichlids in the hobby today. It's a beautiful fish with a lot of different varieties. It can be an awesome fish to keep, one that's not too difficult, as long as you keep a few things in mind, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive right in. So I currently have two freshwater angelfish in my 150 gallon aquarium here. And I've kept other angels in the past and they're just an awesome fish to keep. Angelfish are South American cichlids and some people are surprised to hear that they are cichlids since they do look a lot different than some of the other types and they do stand out for a few different reasons. One of my favorite things about the angelfish is that it has so many different varieties and patterns to choose from. We're not going to talk about every single one of them because this video would be probably an hour long, but you're going to see a lot of different footage from local fish stores and other tanks of these different types of angelfish. But because they are South American cichlids, their ideal tank parameters will be slightly lower on your pH scale, probably around six to seven-ish. Also, soft water is usually better, and their temperature range can be anywhere from about 77 to 86 degrees. Sometimes if you bump up that temperature, it may induce breeding or just make them a little more aggressive, which we'll get to in a little bit. But most angelfish in the hobby today are tank bred or locally sourced, so you won't have to worry too much about matching those ideal parameters. I would usually just recommend keeping things as consistent as possible, and as always, just focusing as much on your ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, which are gonna be much more important to keeping your overall health of your angelfish long term. And although the angelfish are relatively hardy, if you do have any ammonia or nitrite in your tank, that could be dangerous and just keeping those nitrates in check anywhere below 20 parts per million would be ideal when keeping the angelfish. And one way of keeping those nitrates low is to add live plants to your tank. Angelfish are one of the best cichlids when it comes to keeping a planted aquarium. They look great in that setting and the live plants can pull out a lot of those nitrates so you can do less water changes and have lower nitrates over time. And then when it comes to the rest of your tank setup, I usually like sand, driftwood, rocks, and of course live plants. Angelfish won't really interact with your substrate much, so you could go with rocks and that would definitely be fine. In my 150 here, I do have sand because some of my other cichlids do interact with the substrate and I generally like the look of sand a little bit more, so that's usually my recommendation even when it comes to angels. Another thing to keep in mind with the angel is just their size and shape. Adult angelfish can be pretty big, especially from top to bottom as they have their full fins extended, so sometimes your taller tanks do better for your angelfish. Some people will say that you can keep them long term in a 20 gallon high or a 29 gallon tank. And although that can work, I typically wouldn't recommend it. I always recommend the bigger the tank, the better. And I think angels really do best when they're kept in a 40 gallon or larger. A 55 gallon tank is awesome for angelfish because the extra height that the aquarium has is perfect. And when you buy your angelfish at a local fish store, they might be very small, usually about the size of a quarter but they will grow pretty large, like I said, top to bottom about 10 to 12 inches and maybe five to seven inches in length. So they can get pretty big once they reach that adult size. But that's actually on the smaller end when it comes to other South American cichlids. So you can keep them in some of your mid-sized tanks without needing a massive tank to be able to keep them long-term. I would consider the angelfish to be on the peaceful end, especially when it comes to other cichlids, but others in the hobby have said that they can be very aggressive. I've never had that myself, but I can see that happening if they're in too small of a tank or if they're breeding and protecting their eggs or fry. So just keep that in mind that if you have your temperatures too high, if your angelfish are breeding, and if your tank is too small, that you could run into that more semi-aggressive to aggressive angelfish. But I think if you're doing some of those things right, maybe if you have that 55 gallon tank and it's not overstocked, I think you could do a really cool community tank with the angelfish. When it comes to tank mates, I always look at different cichlids first. That's just in my nature. I love some of the more peaceful cichlids with the angelfish, like the Geophagus finni I have here. The Electric Bulacara could be a good option, as well as the Severum, although both of them could be a little too boisterous for the angelfish at times. But because I have a pretty big tank here, they do really well together and they have their own territories. The angelfish is a little thinner and smaller than other South American cichlids. And when it comes to your other cichlids, like your Lake Malawi cichlids, I would definitely stay clear of those just because they are highly active or just too big for the angelfish and they'll probably stress them out and it just probably won't work out long term. If you are trying that, definitely have a backup tank option just in case. But some of your more ideal tank mates for the angelfish can be more of your community fish 
such as your smaller Tetras or mid-sized Tetras that aren't going to be too bad of a fin nipper because angels do have such great fin extensions, you don't want those nipped up. So something like your Neon or Cardinal Tetra would be great. Some of your other schooling fish like your Rummy Nose Tetras could definitely work. Some of your more peaceful barbs could even work. I have my seven Denison barbs in here with my angel fish and they do great. Although the Denison barbs are a little more active than the angels, they usually stay out of the way and it's not stressing the angel out too much. I think again, some of your more boisterous, bigger fish that are also active swimmers are some you wanna stay away from. But as long as they aren't fin nippers, they aren't too active, and they're in different areas of the tank with the angel, you should be just fine. And with that line of thinking, the bottom dwelling fish are a great tank mate option for the angel. This can include things like your plecos, your bristlenose plecos would be great, and something like the corridoras would be a great tank mate option for the angel fish. If I was setting up a 55 gallon tank with angels and more community fish, I would probably do something like corridoras at the bottom, maybe a pleco or two. I would add in some schooling tetras, maybe some cardinal tetras. I would also add maybe a few small cichlids like your apisto or your crevenzas, and then you have your centerpiece fish being the angels. And then with all of that, you'd have your natural tank set up with your live plants, and you would have a great thriving plant and community tank. And then when it comes to breeding angel fish, it can be a very rewarding process and it's not too difficult to do. It can be difficult, however, to sex these guys as males and females will look pretty similar. Until you see the females laying their eggs, it can be pretty difficult to tell. But with angel fish, a pair will form and they will stay together as long as they're in the tank together. They will usually lay eggs on vertical surfaces like your plants, driftwood, decor, filter intakes, or any vertical surface. If you're really serious about it, something like a breeding cone will definitely induce their breeding. And with any cichlid, once they lay those eggs or have those eggs hatched, they will guard them very aggressively. So make sure you have a large enough tank for other fish to get away from them or pull out the pair so that they can have their own tank and space to breed. A good way to wind up with a pair of angel fish is just to get a small group, maybe five to six or more, and put them all in a tank together. They will naturally pair up, and then you can see those pairs form and you can act accordingly. One way to induce breeding, like I said earlier, is just to maybe raise the temperature to your mid 80s or feed them some frozen foods like blood worms and brine shrimp that usually triggers breeding in my experience. On a general level, I usually feed these guys brine shrimp and blood worms maybe once every 10 days or so, and the rest of that time they're getting different flakes and pellets from Extreme. I really love the krill flakes from Extreme as well as the cichlid pellets. And because the angels have smaller mouths, I usually go with the smaller size pellets when I'm feeding these guys. And because they are so easy to breed, they are a good beginner fish if you just wanna experience that and see the whole process through. But just in summary, there are many different types of angel fish and varieties to choose from. So you could really be selective in the color or type that you go with. And because they're on the more peaceful end, they don't get massive, so you don't need a huge tank to keep them. They're easy to breed and feed, and they're relatively hardy fish. They'll also just have really cool swimming behavior, gently swimming back and forth in your tank. It just makes for an awesome fish to keep for all skill levels in the hobby today. The last thing I'll say about the angel fish is if you do have a wave maker in your tank like I do here, I would just angle it upwards so it's not blowing the angel fish around the tank. If you do have too much flow and you're seeing your angel struggle to swim, I would dial that back just a bit or remove the wave maker. Okay, so that does it for today's video on the angel fish. If you have any questions on the care of these guys, leave that down in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.